Hey guys, this is your digital anchor chart for standard 6E8, which is all about inequalities. It says write an inequality of the form X is less than C or X is greater than C to represent a constraint or condition in a real world mathematical problem. Recognize that inequalities of the form X is less than C or X than greater than C have infinitely many solutions. Represent solutions of such inequalities on a number line. So the learning target says I can identify the constraint or condition in a real world or mathematical problem. So I've got two examples here that we're going to look at. We're going to write an inequality for them and we're going to graph them on a number line. So the first one says Miss Southern is trying to limit her daily caloric intake. She wants to stay at 1800 calories a day or less. Write and graph an inequality to represent her daily calorie intake, which we're going to let be C. So if we're wanting to keep the calories under um, at 1800 or at 1800 calories or less, then our, our inequalities should represent that. So I want my calories, C, to be less than or equal to, when you underline a less than or greater than symbol, that means that you are including that value into your answer. So I want my calories to be less than or equal to 1,800. That means they can be 1,800 exactly. That would take some careful uh, meal planning, but it can be 1,800 exactly or anything less than 1,800. So when I put that on a number line, because I am include, including the 1,800, I'm going to have a closed circle. Okay, because I can, 1800 is a value that would make this situation true. So I'm including that and then I'm drawing a line, basically an arrow going this direction. Because in this situation, C can be any value up to and including 1800. So anything at 1800 or less, and that's how you graph this on a number line. If 1800 was not included, this circle would be open instead of closed. All right, let's look at this other scenario here. This says Sam is delivering papers for 50 cent per paper. If he needs to raise $30 at minimum, write an inequality and graph to represent his situ this situation. Let N represent the number of papers. So we've got to do a little more work on this one. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just set up an inequality. So it says I'm going to make 50 cent per paper. I'm letting N represent the number of papers, and I need to raise at least $30. So if I write that down, I'm going to have uh, 50 cent times some number of papers equals greater than or equal to $30. Okay, so now in order to be able to graph this on my number line, I need to figure out what's the minimum value of N? How, what's the minimum number of papers that I can sell to make at least the $30? Now, is it going to be bad if I sell more than that many papers or delivering more than that many papers? Of course not. Then you're going to have more money, which is always a good thing. So um, I know that 50 cent there, that's two papers for a dollar, right? If I want to make $30, then that means I need to sell a minimum of 60 papers. Okay, so the minimum value that's going to make this equation true is 60, which means that N and I can figure that out by dividing by 50 cent on both sides. I just did that mentally, okay? So 30 divided by 50 cent is going to be 60, which means N needs to be greater than or equal to 60. All right, so then I can graph that on my number line. Um, I'll put 60 here. Put 65 here, 70 here, 55, and 50. Okay, so I want um, I want n to be bigger than or equal to 60. So I'm going to close my circle 
because I can include that and I'm going to draw my arrow this way. Because any value that is 60 or bigger would make this inequality true. All right, you guys are gonna do great with this. Just remember if the number is not included instead of a closed circle here, you're gonna have an open circle. So just draw a circle and don't fill it in. Good luck.